This is a Raspberry Pi desktop that doesn't suck. <laughs> this one right here is mint on KDE. It looks beautiful. It's highly responsive with a bunch of different workspaces. It's mint as a desktop replacement, but also has emulation station with a lot of the retro pie stuff on here as well. Uh, I also have a bunch of projects that I've worked on and, and shown in this channel as I've talked about a bunch of Linux content over the past several years here on YouTube. And you can see that like my special bash script is in here as well with a whole bunch of theming uh, you can see certain commands you can cap my bash rc and see a lot of different shortcuts if you really want to get into linux i highly recommend this would be a great starting point using a raspberry pi uh, but coming over here just to kind of lay out so much as i'm not going to cover everything in this video i made an article on my website christitus.com and you can see the differences almost immediately one is much more responsive it's a lot faster and it looks a lot better because the regular raspberry pi desktop looks like this which is ugly and also you would think because it's so ugly it would be fast however i find it to be kind of cumbersome and slow and you can see right here when we go into the start menu yeah we're just on another workspace this is just a screenshot in our, our linux instance loaded up and we'll just pop back over to workspace 2 with this now you can build this yourself and i made this as simplistic as possible if you want to build it yourself i am using raspbian the official uh distribution for raspberry pis and i wanted to kind of build it from a server or a light version so i don't install raspbian desktop or anything like that we start from a server install and then we build out using task sel which is very familiar for those linux users out there and this kind of builds it into a KDE desktop experience. And then we do some modifications to kind of speed things up, uh, make it so the graphics are, are a bit more responsive than, than the stock settings. It's still a Raspberry Pi after all. Don't expect it to compete with like a 5600X from AMD or anything, but it's kind of a neat in that regard. Now, as far as my customizations like this and a lot of the settings that I pull up from KDE here, have some like special window management specifically turning off the compositor in here to kind of get a lot more responsive things you do miss out on the opacity in windows by doing that but since it's a raspberry pi we really want that performance instead another thing with kde that a lot of people miss down here in startup and shutdown on the desktop session, you always want to start with an empty session because whenever it tries to restore a previous session, it one will cause the shutdown to be a lot slower. Even on regular desktops, it's just a good thing to do. And then also it slows down your startup. So that's another optimization that was done. Um, and also kind of just some fun optimizations in there. We like made the boot screen to be like the matrix code coming down uh, on, on reboot. So we'll reboot here in a second, but I just wanted to show those optimizations done here. But Everything is actually included in a project called ConSave. And if you look on the GitHub for this project, you'll notice that they have these two 7-zip files. Download and extract these. This will have the Titus Pi KSNV file, I believe it is. And you can just install Python and, and just go ConSave and then load the configuration by just doing a ConSave-A and then the profile name. It's KNSV. Uh, Titus Pi, and that will apply every customization I've done to KDE all in one go. It's a big file, that's why I had to split it in two on GitHub because they only allow a max of 100 megs, and it's actually about 144 megs or 48 megs, and uh, that will apply all these customizations. Now, if you do have like a, a Raspberry Pi 3, you might want to change some of these customizations. Now, here's all the customizations I did, and I just kind of laid that out so you could copy paste if you'd like. Uh, but you could even kind of expand on this even more and kind of go into overclocking if you want to go into that realm. I really didn't want to do anything past the stock settings, just enough to give me a good bit of performance. But a, a lot of stuff depends on what Raspberry Pi are you using. Uh, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 here, but I've also 
plug this into a 400, which is a little bit more performant. So it's actually even faster on that. And then on a Raspberry Pi 3, you might actually look at uh, GPU and MIM parameters. These GPU MIM parameters are kind of important on the 3. However, they probably should be omitted if you're using a Raspberry Pi 4 as it's going to give you even more performance. So kind of fun things. And then as far as uh, the Retro Pi edition, I mainly just used the manual install from there. So you could do uh, your gaming directly through here. Now in a prior video when I showed Titus Pi, I actually loaded Moonlight on here and some other games which are uh, really fun, uh, but I'm, I'm actually going to show Raspberry Pi because many people have seen that. But you could easily load that up into this and play your retro games and then pop back in and use it as a desktop. So I kind of wanted that versatility, uh, but using Moonlight I actually was doing game streaming to, I think I was playing Warzone or something like that on, on a Raspberry Pi in, in the version 1s and 2s. Now, as far as things that have changed from there, I wanted to make this as easy as possible for folks. So if you want the image file, you can download it directly from cttstore.com. It is $10 if you want to go like that, or I'll leave a discount code down below for like the next seven days. Uh, for any loyal viewers of the channel, please use that and knock it down to $5. And then uh, the big thing is I really want people to build this too. So that's why I left a lot of the build instructions. And if you want to look at versions one and two, or if you bought this in the past, last time, I like I think the first time I released it on the channel was like three years ago. Uh, version three is obviously included as well. But the original version, Versions. You can actually see it better on this screen. Uh, this is how it originally was a tiling window manager and awesome. And I liked this and I, I still personally love this layout, but it's not very user friendly. So that's why I kind of moved to KDE and this type of setup just to have a little bit more broader appeal for those that don't necessarily know Linux like uh, very well. And, and this is a great learning experience because it is very Windows-esque in, in a lot of its design philosophy. And if you're familiar with it, definitely peck around in here, try it out. Or if you want to build it yourself, again, uh, follow these build instructions. And I did it in a live stream. I'll leave links to the live streams. It's a lot of uh, time on those live streams spent, spending, I think it was about six or seven hours kind of going back and forth. Although I think a couple of those hours was me just messing around with compression. Uh, but those live streams are really a fun one to watch and kind of look at. Uh, so I highly encourage people just mess around with Titus Pi. I really love it. Uh, it's something that I've been passionate about. I've been talking about building and obviously I haven't made very many videos as of late and I kind of wanted to correct that and first get this first project out. I have some other really fun stuff in the pipeline. So subscribe if you haven't. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And also, if you want to check me out on these live streams, by all means, hit me up over on Twitch TV, uh, Chris Titus Tech, as I'm streaming three days a week, sometimes four days over there, and then uploading the clips to the Titus Tech Talk channel now as well. So kind of expanding into that realm and then working on these bigger projects as I have something really big in store. But uh, that's going to wait as that's going to be a windows based project as I've been learning a new language, uh, computer language. So that's going to be fun. Uh, so with that guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.